Well, if Brexit's divided the nation, a new frontier opened up today in the national argument, Uber. The mobile cab app has basically transformed transport, especially in London. Since 2010, the number of taxis or minicabs for hire in the capital has gone up by 70% and prices have come down and a culture of impulse cab hire has taken off. But it's not been good for London's traditional black cabs. Now, Transport for London says Uber is not fit to run the service and wants to remove Uber's licence at the end of the month. The mayor of London keeps saying that despite Brexit, London is open to the world. So is this, A, a genuine attack on Uber, which has, after all, been a controversial company, B, a shameless attempt to court favour with the black cab drivers, or C, a turning point in national direction, away from global corporations and the brutal competition fired up by technology? Well, our technology editor, David Grossman, reports. Uber became decidedly less elevated today. Maybe not quite unter, but definitely down. The gloss really does seem to be coming off the gig economy, as we realise that cheap doesn't necessarily mean low cost. It's about consumers waking up to what really funds their cheap meals that are being delivered to them by, say, you know, delivery riders, or what is uh, suddenly the magic formula that allows them to get a taxi cab uh, home every night when they couldn't before. Is it really the innovation, or is it the fact that the driver isn't being paid that well, um, or that the, this company in particular is getting away with not observing laws that everybody else has to? It's been a huge blow for a company that a couple of years ago looked on the brink of world domination, achieved as much as anything else by ruthless political campaigning. Uber was always the most politically plugged in of all the high-tech companies, particularly here in the UK. They were extremely well connected. It meant they had the inside track, the ear of ministers when they needed a regulatory tweak here or there. Like Uber's founder made no bones about what he was doing. We didn't realize it, but we're in this political campaign and the candidate is Uber. Mm -hmm. And the opponent is an asshole named Taxi. Okay. And he's not a very nice character. People don't like what he does, but he's so woven into the political fabric and machinery uh, that lots of people owe him favors and he keeps paying so the political machinery likes him. He hired former Google executive Rachel Whetstone to head worldwide communications. She is married to Steve Hilton, David Cameron's former director of strategy. The families are very close friends. In the UK, Uber hired Alex Bellardinelli as head of communications. He spent a decade working for Ed Balls, so he helped square relations with the Labour Party. But then... David Cameron was replaced by Theresa May and Jeremy Corbyn took over Labour. Suddenly, the high-level contacts were gone. We can see a change in the mood in terms of how these gig economy companies, not just Uber, are being approached on all fronts. So Theresa May has uh, made it a manifesto point to tackle the gig economy. That was not the case with the Cameron government. Um, and we have seen, obviously, with the rise of Jeremy Corbyn, a real emphasis on the focus on um, on employee rights and uh, the elimination of zero contract, um, zero hour contracts. Having acted politically for so long, Uber now insists they're the victims of a political stitch up. So this was a surprise and I think the decision of the mayor in TfL clearly under extreme pressure from a small number uh, of individuals and groups that want to protect the status quo and reduce consumer choice and competition. Although passengers seem to love the cheap fares, supporting the gig economy is becoming politically toxic. Well, Luke, that's David Grossman. Uber certainly had people arguing today. For some, Transport for London and the Labour Mayor Sadiq Khan are attacking the modern world, uh, as well as the immigrant drivers who make up much of the Uber fleet, as well as London consumers. For others, including Nigel Farage, who uh, welcomed the news on Twitter, this is about putting global capitalism back under control. Let's talk to Steve McNamara, the General Secretary of the Licensed Taxi Drivers Association. Do you, what, what is the price difference between Uber and black cabs? Have you done any work on what the kind of average Yeah, we've, we've done lots of work on it. It varies. During the day, um, they're realistically about 20% cheaper than us. Yeah. But at night, for longer journeys, it could be anything up to 50% cheaper. Yeah, I mean, for, for sort of airport journeys, it's, it's, it looks like it's half the price, really. It, it, it depends where you are, but they are an awful lot yeah. cheaper. But there are reasons for that, as, as, as you're aware. Right. Uber's very um, set-up predatory pricing model. 
um, has been set up to, to force people out of business. It's completely well, uneconomic. It's, it's, I mean, it's, it's remained it's remained below below the black cabs for a very long time, hasn't it? Predatory pricing tends to be temporary, and then you put them up. They've, well, they've no. got. 40,000 drivers, they haven't that's put because, it up, so that's it's cheap, because, isn't it? That's because they haven't put us out of business. Right. What they have done is put 75% of the existing minicab companies in London out of business. But there are many more drivers in London than there were. And they're all earning a, they're all earning and, a minimum and wage or less. Be, but for consumers, you would say that's, that's pretty good news, isn't a it? A cheap ch- T-shirt from China made for children for a pound is good for consumers. doesn't mean it's morally right. right. But you, you've bought clothes made in China and Vietnam, haven't you? Uh, I, I have, but I don't right. do it anymore because I'm you now don't aware do it, it work. No, you I don't go use low-cost no, airlines? And I don't buy stuff from Uber and I certainly and don't And you don't go to supermarkets now. to buy vegetables because they put the green grocers out of business? Um, I try to shop locally if I can. And is that the society you want everybody to be in? No supermarkets, no low-cost no, airlines, that's not, that's no not, shirts from China or that's Vietnam? That's not what I'm saying. What, what, but what, what are you saying? What I am saying to you is that London has been invaded by a $70 billion company that had absolute control in Downing Street, as your um, piece there showed. What your piece didn't tell you is in 2015, the previous mayor, Boris Johnson, was so concerned about the... Uh, level of attacks and stuff in Uber vehicles. He looks at bringing in regulation. He was kowtowed, stymied by Osborne and Cameron. He was taken into Downing Street, even though all the well, powers had been devolved to Boris. And he was you say invaded by invaded by a company that brought us much cheaper cabs and provided thousands of jobs. Just on no, safety... Sorry, sorry, in, me- in thousands of jobs. Uber recently were taken to court by their drivers and they argued very strenuously yeah. that they weren't not, their not, employees. Uh, and now yeah. you're saying, because they're going to lose them, they are losing the jobs. That's not the case. Right. So, you're think, so, so what is your message to the 25,000 or so London drivers who currently work, contract, because we know there is this complicated whole issue, not complicated. contract to Uber? What, what did you, do you hope they go... No, do, do, my, do they stay in the business? Yeah, my, my message to them is quite simple. What will happen once Uber disappears from the streets of London, we'll see a re-emergence of small local minicab firms that we had before. Many of them now use More drivers or fewer drivers? So the total capacity of drivers available would be more or the same? I think it would stay roughly the same. People have got used to using personal transport. I think it would stay the same. But what we'll have, we'll have a small number of companies working locally, paying tax in the UK, something Uber deliberately right. don't do. Do your drivers Holland. pay tax on their tips? Any do you three, think they declare all their income on t- any three income? Ta- Any three black cab drivers in London paid more tax than a $70 billion company. That's yeah. all the stats you need to know. On safety, which was one of the grounds Uber has been told it won't get its licence renewed, many people, particularly women, have said they actually think Uber is safer because the journey is tracked, you know who the car driver is. It's actually quite different to getting in a black cab where there's no logging of the transaction and you'd People have no idea what is happening. And cheap available cabs, licensed cabs, are much better than no cabs or unlicensed cabs. Right. Well, firstly, perception is often not reality, as we know. The perception that it's safer is not, ma- uh, is not um, maintained by the statistics. The simple fact is that a recent FOI showed the number of uh, rapes and sexual assaults in Uber is running at 32 a year, according to the Met right. Police. 32. The Met Police have recently criticised Uber for trying to not report rapes and sexual assaults. They reported them to TfL, but not to the police, I think, didn't well, they? Well, uh, last time I looked, you reported rapes and sexual assaults yeah. to the police and not to Transport for London. The police actually specifically said that Uber were deliberately not doing it, trying to protect their reputation. I don't think they've got a reputation, but what they have got, they were trying to hang on to. Steve McNamara, thanks for coming Thank in. Thank you. Thanks.